everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John and today we're here to talk about the Three Colors trilogy that came out in the mid 90s. And we're also here today to talk about its brand new Criterion 4K Blu-ray release that just came out. But before we dive into that, if you are a fan of 4K Blu-ray reviews, movie reviews, some tech and game reviews along the way, and if you're in the podcast, we do that all here on the channel and nothing helps the channel out more than by liking us, subscribing to the channel, and then searching for us on all podcast services. So the Three Colors trilogy and me have a very unique relationship. When I first started really getting into film, one of my big blank spots was foreign film. So I was just searching lists of what the greatest foreign films were. And one thing that kept popping up was this Three Colors trilogy, directed by Krzysztof Kieslowski. And it had such a unique premise about the way that he went about making this trilogy that it fascinated me. So I went out of my way and found these trilogy of movies and watched them for the first time. And this is about 2012, 2013. So these are actually some of my first foreign language films that I probably ever saw, or at least the ones that I went out of my way to see. And from the very beginning, I loved these trilogy of movies. I just thought they were phenomenal, the story they were telling. I love movies like these. They're all psychological dramas, and they're really all exploring exactly what makes a human being work. What is the things that make them tick? What is the thing, what is their philosophy on life? And exactly what are they doing through their day-to-day -day life to orchestrate the pain that they are feeling? And all three of these dive right into that. The first one, Three Colors Blue is by far my favorite of the trilogy. I feel like most people lean towards Three Colors Red. And Three Colors Red is great because it wraps up this entire trilogy because they are all very loosely connected. They're all actually based on the colors of the French flag. You know, like we in here in America, we say red, white, and blue. They say blue, white, and red. And each color on their flag represents a certain philosophy. So blue is liberty, white is equality, and red is fraternity. And each one of these movies are really supposed to be centered around that central theme of that color that orchestrates to the film and that flag. So for blue, the whole movie is just so lit up in blue. That's what really attracted me to these films is actually the cinematography of them because each one, like blue is so prominent in Three Colors Blue, white white is so prominent in Three Colors White, and red is just so prominent in Three Colors Red. They really, they make sure all the environments have just, you could see the main theme of the film in the background, the objects that they're using. Even like in Three Colors Blue, for example, there's this like hanging light thing that, that, re that I've never seen before, that's blue, and they just have so many lingering shots on it. The cinematography through all three films is phenomenal, and they all don't actually copy each other in the cinematography too, which is just another amazing thing about this trilogy of films. Like, there's just certain shots from Three Colors Blue, like there's a very famous shot of, of a sugar cube being just dipped in the coffee, and the sugar cube absorbing the coffee. It's a very famous shot, and like, it's just amazing. But then in Three Colors Red, the opening credits have this awesome, almost like CGI effect where the camera's just going super fast and we go into the phone lines, which is actually illustrated on the cover of the Criterion Collection Blu-ray and 4K releases. Even throughout the trilogy, you know, even though if blue, you might see some aspects of white that just stand out, like a lighter in, in Three Colors Blue is white and then there's this other aspects of red. Uh, but like I said, my favorite of these three movies is Three Colors Blue because it's dealing with a tragedy and that tragedy is just one of the most heartbreaking tragedies that you'll ever see on film. Very At the very beginning of this movie, a woman's husband, who is a very famous composer in France, is killed and their daughter. And now she has to go on with the rest of her life and this movie is just exploring her overcoming, getting her liberty back, hence the name, you know, Three Colors Blue and dying into the French flag. And it's really just about her life and now what happens. She decides, you know what, even though he was this rich, famous man, she decides to sell everything off, start a new life, live in an apartment. You know, she herself, though, apparently was writing a lot of his music. And then she finds out that he was having an affair and then this woman turns out now, even though he didn't know, is pregnant. And it's really about her coming to terms with the fact that her husband, who she loved and had a kid with, who she cherished, actually was stepping out of line on her and she, he was actually a good man to this woman and it's about their relationship now post him passing away and her daughter passing away and now that he's gone now she's got to accept like yeah she's pregnant with his child a man I love you know it's not her fault so she it's just you know it really takes a very human look at that and like what people would do and just again the cinematography there's some scenes where she's where our lead is swimming in a pool and amazing beautiful shots that I just Three Colors Blue is phenomenal. It's just one of my favorite movies, probably, I wouldn't say all time, but it, it, it just, it's the best one of this trilogy, in my opinion, and I think if you're going to seek out one, definitely seek out Three Colors Blue. Uh, Three Colors White is always considered the, the worst of the trilogy, but it's still a great movie, and it's another one that 
I, I think that the quiet moments in Three Colors White are some of the best where we just have two people on screen. And you know, again, this is more of a comedy and the way Roger Ebert actually looked at these three films is he looked at the first one as an anti-tragedy, the second one as an anti-comedy, and the third one as an anti-romance. And I can see that completely because they definitely are taking the tropes that you know from all of these and flipping them on their head, on their head and then actually tying the themes of the flag and the, all of them. And also, all these are kind of lightly connected and, and they wrap it up in a real nice bow at the end of Three Colors Red because I don't want to spoil it because I feel like a lot of people probably haven't seen these and maybe if they have, you know, you want to revisit it. And I don't want to spoil any of this for you guys, but I really do think that definitely check out the entire trilogy and watching them all back to back to back is probably the best way to go because you're going to get the most out of it and you're going to recognize like characters that overlap a little bit because it's not beating you on the head. It's not pointing it out to you. You really have to pay attention to what overlaps and you pay attention to the themes. And then when you get the three colors red, that one is very fascinating. It's a very original tale, but it actually reminded me that I feel like three colors red had a huge inspiration on Sofia Coppola and Lost in Translation because it does explore an older man having a relationship that isn't romantic with a younger woman. Because in Three Colors Red, she's kind of getting like blown off by her boyfriend. He doesn't really seem to care about her. He's actually very rude to her, but she's just looking for companionship and love. She's lonely. She's by herself. And one night she accidentally runs over a dog and she brings it back to her neighbor who just doesn't seem to care about it. He's like, ah, I don't care. You could take it. You could take the dog. He pays for the bills and everything. She starts to like figure out what exactly is this man doing and why is he the way he is? What is his philosophy on life? Because, it's, you know, he's a very honest man, even if he's doing some dishonest stuff and their relationship like you wouldn't expect it to evolve into the way it does but the whole time I was thinking you know this feels like a huge inspiration on Lost in Translation and I do love Lost in Translation so that's not a bad thing at all and like I said Three Colors Red puts a nice bow on the entire trilogy really just wraps it up nicely if you could watch these all back to back to back I really do think you're going to be incredibly invested in all the characters the most famous actress probably through all three of these is in Three Colors White and that actress's name is Julie Duplai who many people might recognize from another really great trilogy of movies is the Before Sunset trilogy from Richard Linklater from the 90s, 2000s, and then even in 2012. So you will recognize her in these out of everybody in this, but everyone just does a phenomenal job acting. A bunch of actors who I've never really even paid attention to. They just all feel like real people with real emotions trying to tell real stories. And the pain that they feel is illustrated so well. And I really do think that the, the direction and cinematography are what carries these throughout in all three films because, it's, like I said, all three movies are shot incredibly beautiful. A lot of lingering shots that really help to portray the emotion that these actors and actresses have to portray on their face. I'm, I'm just like, I can't really sell short how good this trilogy of movies are. Trilogies are so hard. Very rarely do we get a trilogy of movies that stick the landing or at least one of them isn't as good as the other two. Like you can argue white's not as good as red and blue, but I say that all three movies are good. I think this is right up there with the Before trilogy and the Lord of the Rings trilogy as being a complete trilogy of movies that are all good, all that should be watched in a row. But anyway, let's dive into this 4K pack that just came out from Criterion. So here is the Three Colors Trilogy in 4K. So this is a previous release. This actually came out on Blu-ray, I believe in 2011, and it's been in my cart forever. I never pulled the trigger on it. I don't know why. I was always waiting for it to drop in price because it was always usually pretty expensive. And then when they announced the 4K trilogy, I was like, that's it, I'm getting that. So I asked my wife for our anniversary slash Valentine's Day, we combined the gifts. I'm like, could you grab me the Three Colors 4K trilogy? I would really like to do a review on the channel and I've always wanted to own those movies. And she grabbed them for me. And then when I sat down, I put Three Colors Blue in there. I couldn't wait to see that on 4K because I just, you know, I knew that the resolution was gonna pop. It was gonna be brighter. I, I couldn't wait to see it and man, I was disappointed with Three Colors Blue in 4K. So the real big problem is that they changed the color timing on all three movies. Uh, most, spe most specifically and most noticeable, I think, is in blue. It actually hurts the movie a lot, the fact that they changed the color timing. It, it was a very cool film. You know, they, they had a blue tint to it. Same thing with Three Colors White. That had a white tint to it. Three Colors Red had like a slight red tint to it. I think Three Colors Red out of all three of these 4Ks is the best looking. They all have HDR 10. They all have Dolby Vision, which I, I was pretty shocked. I didn't expect that from Criterion. They all have the same really good audio track, which is a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1. The audio is probably the standout in quality. It's amazing. 
I, I think it's some of the best audio tracks that I've ever heard as far as like being released on Criterion. I was very blown away by that. No Dolby Atmos, but an unnecessary, I think, for these types of films. Like the score is great through all three. It's the same composer through all three. And I, and I think that the best score is going to be in Three Colors 3 out of the three of them. I really do think that the emotions are definitely being driven by not just the dialogue, but by the score in Three Colors Red. So I think that having a really nice DTS 5.1 is amazing on three colors red the rest of them i think they're all great like the, the mix is just perfect i think they did a great job on the mix on all three of these and criterion really does do some phenomenal work so to say that the visuals on three colors blue white and red because they changed the color timing and the color temperature it really does bother me and it really does hurt me and i i really feel like for anyone who has a relationship with these movies they're going to notice right away three colors blue is a very cool movie it's in blue like it's got that blue tint throughout the entire thing it almost feels very overcast anytime they're outside they change that to a very warm yellow and now so when she's outside walking around now it feels like a like a like a sunny day and it never felt like that before it really bothered me that they made that decision and i'm not too sure why i've heard people say that it's because of you know this is how was originally intended now Christoph Kizilowski passed away in 1996 so I don't think we're asking him what he thought about it and what really confuses me is that the blu-ray scans of this are really good are in line with how these movies are supposed to be seen so I'm very confused as to why they would change the color timing on all three of these films it doesn't make almost any sense because a big part of these movies is the cinematography and to make that change it, it really does hurt the movies i really think of the cinematography as being one of the driving forces of all of these movies i actually at an hour 10 in the three colors blue i took the 4k out and i put the blu-ray back in and the 4k is so much sharper and clearer and brighter and the fact that i had to go back to the blu-ray which it, it looks a little rough it's very grainy the blacks do not get deep at all it doesn't hit the brightness levels at all of the 4k but it keeps the color timing and the color temperature that i really do think adds to the film and it, to lose that it really does hurt the film overall i'm not talking like you know certain movies the cinematography isn't a big part of the movie but for these three movies it's a huge part of the movie and to mess with that it really does hurt it and you know you could have just released a 4k without the color timing changes and with the color timing changes now if you come to these 4ks for the first time and you've never seen these films before and this is your first time with them you're probably not going to care you're going to be like okay this is how you came to the movies and you're going to be like these are incredible 4ks because they are they're beautiful they have some of the most detail you're ever going to see in 4ks there's scenes where there's just leaves on the ground you can see the detail in the leaves in three colors blue you can see the dust on the piano you can see fingerprints like the resolution is so clear it's so dynamic so vivid the contrast is perfect but you ruined them all by changing the color timing and i'm still not sure why that was it took me right out of the movie i'm never going to watch three colors blue and white in 4k again so you're probably wondering well what about three colors red well three colors red actually the 4k i think is the superior version to the blu-ray and i think that's just because the color timing does actually work with three colors red compared to blue and white and i'm wondering if when they were doing three colors red they took the color timing of that and moved it over to blue and white to try and make them all look uniform but that really wasn't the point they're all supposed to look different and unique uh, again i'm just so confused as to why the visual presentation is like this it just doesn't make any sense to me these movies have been around since the you know 1993 94 94 so why are we touching the color timing on these and messing around with that because I just feel like for anyone who's a fan of these movies they're gonna notice almost immediately what they did in three colors white they'd have a flashback where it's a it's the previous wedding scene where these two got married and it's got this faded white look to it and it's blown out white and it works perfectly for that scene now it's yellow and it, it's not white anymore, so I, I don't understand. I don't understand those choices. It's very frustrating. Like I said, I did the same thing with white. About 45 minutes in, I switched to the Blu-ray, and then I went today, this morning, before I did this review, and I tested the Dolby Vision on it to see if that fixed any of those problems, because the original time I watched this, I was watching it in HDR 10. So when I was checking that, now same problem. They're all too warm. And, uh, I don't know. I was just very disappointed with the visuals on three colors blue and white red i think the 4k is better 
but say you know they still did change the color timing a little bit and if you are very attached to three colors red you might notice that and it might upset you for me my attachment mostly is the three colors blue and you know it's just very noticeable and white to the point where i was like uh, I, I don't like this at all and it's a shame again like i said the audio is so good the visuals they are really good they did an amazing job this is up there with some of the highest quality 4k transfers you're ever going to see but to mess around with the color timing it almost ruins all of that hard work completely now like i said these were all previously released on blu-ray in this pack so it's nothing new they just added the 4k discs so all the extras have been out for the past 12 years you get nothing new like that all this is is an update to the 4k scan so if by chance you haven't seen this this is some incredible packaging the packaging in this is just some of the best you'll ever see. It's right up there with the Before Trilogy. So you get this nice box on the outside. I would have preferred a harder box though. And when you pull it out, you know, you get this nice reading material on this really nice paper stock, a thick book, almost as thick as these 4Ks and Blu-rays packs. And I think they just, um, again, you know, really nice paper material. It's got a nice glossy finish to it. It doesn't seem to take fingerprints that bad. So just, you know, it's got a little bit of weight to it. So again, great packaging on this. Each movie, so if you start with blue, has its own packaging. So when you open it up, you know, you get the 4K on top, the Blu-ray underneath. I don't like the layered 4K and Blu-rays. I've never been a fan of that because you got to take the 4K out to get the Blu-ray. I would have preferred if they put the 4K on this side, but that's a minor complaint. Nothing too crazy. I have no issues with the packaging. When you get to white, and then you get to red. So everything else besides the visuals are incredible. I would give everything else a 10 out of 10, five stars, whatever you want to give it. So I'm very happy with that I have this because I've always wanted to own these movies and Three Colors Red being a 4K upgrade is definitely a plus for me. I definitely feel like, okay, at least I can hold on to these. I don't have to return them and pick up just the Blu-rays because I'm never going to watch the 4Ks again. At least I know that when I do revisit this trilogy, I will watch Three Colors Red in 4K again. But on the other hand, I really can't sell short how disappointed I am in Three Colors Blue and White and those color timing changes and the fact that I'm never going to put these beautiful 4Ks in my 4K player again because I really really do feel like changing the color temperature dragged down the entire experience for me and watching the film. And if I was to recommend to a new viewer, I would say definitely check out the Blu-ray first. If you feel like you have a connection to that Blu-ray, then you put the 4K in and you're like, okay, I feel like I lost something here. You'll understand what I'm talking about. But if you don't, I'm very curious for some new viewers. If you've ever, if you've never seen these 4Ks before and then you watch them, I'm very curious what you think of the 4K transfers having not seen the film before because I'm wondering if that's what really disappoints me the most is the connection I have to Three Colors Blue and that changing the color temperature I feel like does change how you feel about the movie. I'm just very curious how a new viewer coming to these 4Ks would actually feel about these 4Ks because again, they're just such good transfers. They just just don't look like they're supposed to look in my opinion and you know with great packaging great audio it's very hard to give this a failing grade but because of my disappointment I'm gonna still just only give this a 6.5 out of 10 when I was growing up a 65 was passing and I think this still gets a passing grade just because a lot of people put a lot of effort into this and my disappointment is just in one area but that one area I feel like drags down the entire experience that you're gonna have with these trilogy of movies it and again guys this does not bring me any joy i'm a huge criterion fan if i i think you guys have probably seen videos in the past where i've said this was one of my most anticipated 4k releases of the year i couldn't wait to get my hands on this and i had a great time watching all three movies so i don't want you guys to think that i'm just the most upset or sad i've ever been it's just that i'm just disappointed i still had a great time watching these movies like i always do they really are very philosophical they're very much john movies where it just it makes you look in it yourself there's a line in three colors red where after she runs over the dog and he asks her did you really take the dog to the vet for the dog or did you take it so that you could rest your head at night on your pillow not having to worry about a dead dog and you know what that's something that i think every human being has to ask themselves do you really do something good for the other person or are you doing it so that your conscience can rest because i really feel like that we've all been there where it's like i'm gonna do this only because i don't want to be worried about this for so long and uh, you know what this movie and all three of these movies raise questions like that throughout the entire trilogy. So if you're in the philosophical movies or psychological dramas, I can still highly recommend these any which way you want to see them. Those Blu-ray scans are actually on HBO Max right now, so you don't even have to grab these if you don't want to. But if you have that Blu-ray pack, I recommend sticking with it. If you want to, if you don't own these at all, I can still say, you know, I'll grab that 4K pack, see what you think, you know. 
everyone's opinion is different. Maybe you disagree with me completely. And if you do, I want to hear that in the comments section below. But we're also here today. It's Friday, and that means it's time for the Digital Code Giveaway. And if you're new to the channel, we do this every single week. So on Friday's video, either Matt or I will ask you guys two questions. All you have to do is answer one in the comment section below, but you can answer both. We're not going to stop you. And when you do answer one of those questions, your name is automatically going to be put on a magic wheel. And on Monday's video, we're going to spin that wheel two times, pick two winners, and those winners will have their choice of the digital codes that you saw on your screen before you today. But what are this week's two digital code giveaway questions? Well, I wanted to ask two questions kind of in line with each other and kind of speak to my disappointment. So what is the most disappointed you have ever felt after watching a movie? And then on the flip side of that, what is the most surprised you've ever felt watching a movie? So what is a movie that you know you watched and you just left it feeling like, oh, that should have been so much better. I was so excited. And then what's the opposite of that of a movie you were dreading seeing and then you came out the other side going, wow, that was a really good movie. So I'm just wondering, you don't have to answer both of those questions, but if you guys answer one of those questions, again, you come back here to Monday's video, we'll spin that wheel and see who our two lucky winners are. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here on another episode of Let's Talk With Me. Nothing helps this channel out more than by you liking this video, subscribing to the channel, searching for us on all podcast services, subscribing there, giving us a couple of five-star ratings for a couple of five-star men. Give a five-star man! And then after you do all that, we want you guys to go out in the streets and tell all your friends about us. <laughs>